to. This is BBC One Scotland. Now, time to join Martin Geisler for election 2021 Scotland. It is the day of reckoning, the day we find out what the future of our country looks like and what that means for us all. Very warm welcome to the second day of our coverage of the 2021 Scottish Parliament election. I'm Martin Geisler and I'll be with you throughout the day as we bring you those all important results from right across the country. We're live now on BBC Radio Scotland as well as BBC One Scotland as the outcome of this election hangs in the balance. If yesterday's anything to go by, we're going to be spoiled for some of the biggest moments in recent history. It was so good in fact that our political editor Glenn Campbell has come back for more. He's back for day two. As ever, Glenn's going to be on hand to tell us what it all means as the politicians await their fate. Also here with me is Professor Ailsa Henderson from Edinburgh University. She runs the Scottish Election Study. More on that to come, I'm sure. Welcome back to you, Ailsa. We look forward to hearing your thoughts as the election reaches a critical point. So stick with us. You won't want to miss a second as the picture becomes clear. Now, the thing about cliches, of course, is that they're often true. And this election remains on a knife edge. What surely isn't in doubt is that Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP are heading for a historic fourth straight election victory. The big unknown, of course, is whether the First Minister returns to Holyrood with an overall majority. Remember, the magic number for that is 65. Douglas Ross and the Scottish Conservatives increased their vote share in certain parts of the country yesterday, but there was a big loss for them in air. All eyes on the regional vote for him today with his stop another independence referendum message. Anna Sarwar also increased the Labour vote in his Glasgow Southside battle with Nicola Sturgeon and his deputy Jackie Bailey held on in Dumbarton late yesterday. That's the country's most marginal seat. But as with the Tories, it's a mixed picture for Labour with a loss for them of East Lothian. It's a big day for the Scottish Greens and their co-leaders Patrick Harvey and Lorna Slater. They are also looking to the regional list to today to get numbers on the board. At the last election, they had six MSPs elected that way and polls suggest that number might increase today. But will it? Hold what you have was the story for Willie Rennie and his Liberal Democrats yesterday. They'll be hoping for an increase on the sole list seat they picked up last time round. But even a solitary seat looks difficult for Alex Salmond and his new Alapa party. Speaking to us last night, he wasn't talking up his chances of a dramatic return to Hollywood. So, plenty of intrigue, drama, suspense and all the rest of it. Of course, we're going to keep you right up to date and summarise the story as we go through the day. And helping us to do that is Laura Goodwin at the news desk. Hi, Laura. Hi, Martin. Good afternoon, everyone. Day two of results and plenty more to come. I'll be here on the news desk, so we'll recap what happened yesterday. We'll look ahead to some of the key seats to watch for today if the SNP are to get that overall majority. Real divergence in the political picture in England and Wales, so we're watching that too. And we are on the lookout for funny tweets, preferably about the election. Yes, always on the lookout for them. Now, there's plenty for Gary Robertson and his political panels to get stuck into today, isn't there, Gary? Absolutely, Martin. Good afternoon. Uh, we've had quite a few results, but we still don't have the full picture. So throughout this afternoon, as things start to become clear, I'll be hearing from senior politicians about their party's fortunes, the makeup of the new parliament, and what the result means for the country's constitutional future. It's going to be a fascinating day, but also a fascinating five years ahead. All right, thanks for that, Gary. We will see you very soon. Let's take a closer look now, though, at uh, where we've got to after yesterday's results. David Wallace-Lockhart can take care of that for us. He's standing by with his graphics. Hi, David. 
Martin, here's where things currently sit. The SNP are on 40 seats. The Lib Dems have four. The Conservatives have three. And Labour have two. The Greens have no seats. The SNP can still get an outright majority, but the route to this result is a narrow one. Later today, we'll also be filling in the 56 regional list seats. Let's remember the bulk of the Tory, Labour and Green MSPs will be delivered here. Given the SNP's constituency performance, it will be hard for them to get many candidates elected via these list results. Thanks, David. And more of that from you as the day goes on. Let's head now, though, to our results centre. Our team there is going to be on hand when all the declarations come in. And Professor Nicola McEwen is going to be keeping an eye across the data for us. What should we be looking out for today, Nicola? Well, we still have around about a third of the constituencies to declare their result before we get to those regional list votes. As, yes as with yesterday, we expect uh, those contests to be dominated by the SNP because they so overwhelmingly dominate the constituency element of the contest. There are a couple of seats to look out for where it might be possible with just a small swing that the SNP could gain additional seats. Those are Aberdeenshire West and Galloway and West Dunfries. But there are a couple of seats that the SNP is defending that if a pattern that we saw yesterday repeats itself today might be difficult uh, to hold on to because these are seats where the, the former MSP retired, so it's a new MSP. There's not the incumbency bounce that we would normally expect. And those are in Persia and South Kinross and Aberdeen South and North Kincardine. So that's some seats to look out for today. All right, well, you will keep an eye on them for us, I'm sure, and uh, we'll be watching for all of those as the day goes on. Those are the, the small stories to look out for, but, of course, the big picture is all about Holyrood, this place, and who's going to be receiving their welcome pack and their passes from the start of next week, and who isn't? Who's going to be looking for a new job? They're uh, there at Holyrood for us with a panel of guests throughout the day is Rajdeep Sandhu. Hi, Rajdeep. Hello, Martin. Welcome back to Holyrood as we continue to bring you analysis and reaction over the course of the second day of counting. As you said, the, elect uh, the election is, of course, all about the parliament behind me, and we should get a better idea of what the makeup will be of that parliament later this afternoon. And to assess all of it, I'll have with me Ramsey Jones, former Downing Street advisor to David Cameron, Andrew Wilson, who was previously an SNP MSP, and ex-Labour MP Danielle Rowley. All right, Rajdi, much more to come from you as well over the course of the day. Thank you very much indeed for that. Uh, Glenn, let's talk about turnout, because that was the big story yesterday, wasn't it? It took everybody by surprise. Voters got the message that this election really matters. Two obvious reasons, COVID and the Constitution. COVID, because Holyrood has been exercising greater powers during the pandemic than ever before.